Welcome to our podcast, This Life, The Chronicles of Autism Mums. I'm Alison Saraf, and I'm joined each week by amazing women who happen to have children on the spectrum. We talk about navigating the ups and downs of parenting kids with autism and how that affected us and our lives as women, professionals, and mothers. Strap in, grab some tissues, sometimes you'll cry from empathy and others from laughter. Join us on our journey of this life. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of This Life, the Chronicles of Autism Mums. I'm Alison Saraf and today I'm joined with just Hasna. Hi. It's just Hasna and I. Hi Hasna. Hello. Um, Today we are going to be talking about a very specific topic which is standardised testing. Um, So for those of you um, who are listening that are not sure and maybe have heard a little bit about standardised testing, we're not sure exactly what it is. Hasna, can I ask you to kind of... I mean, Just let us know a little bit about it. tests, and in this case, we're talking about educational tests or any test that is uh, that measures something, whether it's uh, your IQ, your intelligence, or uh, your your skills in a certain area. Or and these these are available in every field, and they're standardized testing for everything, for math, for engineering, for whatnot. But they are standards that will. MAP testing and standardized testing, for example, uh, the SAT, the TOEFL, and so on. There are, for when we speak special needs, there are sta- standardized tests that measure uh, the intelligence, someone's visual abilities, someone's processing abilities, and so on. Uh, you, you can tell us why those were, were actually developed and why. Right, so um, during the Industrial Revolution, there was a lot of standardized testing development uh, developed just primarily because there was such a there was boom. such a shift and a boom towards schooling education and lots of different things so um, in order to make that a, a, a process if you like um, in the kind of 17 1800s standardized testing um, was used um, and for actually, data collection and right. to measure and to make yeah. some decisions. But do they apply to today's world? Do they apply to special needs? Do, I mean, do that. I mean, yeah. that's a very, very good question. Yeah. So uh, let's just take one kind of step back before yeah. we kind of discuss yeah. this in more detail. When, when would you use the standardized test? So for our children, when would a standardized test be So, so the used? schools often uh, ask for educational psychological evaluations that's just to see how the child learns. Um, the IQ tests, in this case, I was asked to let my son take one uh, because uh, I was applying to a special uh, needs school in the U.S. actually. But they asked before we talk, give us an IQ test. And that's when I realized how much standardized tests let down our kids, uh, kids with autism especially, but kids with special needs in general so- are very yeah individual they're very like their strengths are individuals right. they're they're you know it's not standardized tests is not is going to let them down colossally it's mm. not going to pick up right. what they can do it's going to put them in a box right. and it does that to everybody not just for kids yeah. but it especially hurts kids with special mm-hmm. needs so um my first question and the first alarm bell that's ringing for me is um for a sen school to be asking for a standardized test yeah. for an iq um do you think that that is requested? I mean, obviously, they need to know what level he's yeah, at. No, I'm, a, I'm not. I'm. Uh, is it? Is it? No. Is it? Is it that test that was requested because there's nothing else available? I mean, I was pretty shocked that that was the first thing they asked because apparently uh, they call themselves. Uh, they're a school that. I mean, just for them, just them asking me. I want to see how smart your child is to see if I can accommodate him and not, mm. then you're already taking, stripping away right. everything that yeah. he is and you're basing it on a test that yeah. is not able even gonna, to, to measure what right. he really is. Because yeah. I can tell you that the score that my son got, my 15 year old son got, uh, falls in the category of severely intellectual disabled. Right. And that my son is not that at all. It's not a reflection of who he is. He has some weaknesses and a lot of challenges, but he also has so many strengths that, you mm-hmm. know, that test just, it's right. not him. It's not a reflection of and, him. And just to be clear here, you're not a parent who is in denial about anything. Absolutely you're very, not. very proactive, proactive in terms of... Proactive, open, and, and, and open. realistic. Re- yes. I am absolutely yeah. realistic. So we're not trying about, to cover no. up what he is capable no. or not capable no. of. What, so, so let's just talk about the test in itself. I mean, um, the, I mean obviously, 
you don't feel that this is an accurate ref- how it's tested is not an accurate no, reflection I was of what he's capable pretty of. pretty shocked and right. I know it's been so long uh, but I was very shocked at the time I was less educated 10, uh, 12 years ago when my son was getting his first mm-hmm. uh, evaluation at a hospital in the US but uh, this time I sat through some of it and saw some of the, ans- the questions and also asked the expert how do you administer those and they're very strict in the way you can administer them. Right. Like you ask the question twice, there's no answer, yes. it's a zero. Yeah. You are not allowed to do accommodations. Mm-hmm. You are not allowed to switch it up. There's very, very strict rules on how to carry out that test. So mm-hmm. I don't care how qualified the psychologist carrying out that test is. These are the rules she has to go by or he has to, or, you know, these are the rules of, of the test. And that test, like I said, my son ended up with a very low score mm-hmm. that is nowhere near. If I saw that, if the school saw that, it would be like, no, no way. He needs mm-hmm. to go to a, you know, he's he's not independent. He's not this, he's, which is not what he is at all. Right. So I felt so let down and I felt even more let down that it was a special needs. So that shows you that even with uh, special needs schools, sense schools and whatnot, they're also filtering out the kids. They're also filtering, they're trying to get like the top cases, the brilliant cases, what we would call in the past Asperger's or whatnot, kids with like a higher intelligence somewhere, but like, and then say, okay, our school is, you know, doing such a, of course, you're filtering kids according to skills and that, that just lets them down. That is not inclusion. So honestly, I even changed my mind about that school in general, Mm -hmm. because after going through the process, I realized that this is how we st- we're starting, then my son will never be seen, and all I want is for him to be seen. I was also angry at the psychologist that administered the test, even though she's a great, great person. We've been, you know, we've been working with her for years, but I was shocked because it was all black and white. Mm-hmm. And she told me, I'm sorry, yeah, the system is messed up, but I can't, you can't, change I can't make it, accommodations, I can't yeah. switch that mm-hmm. around. I can't, mm-hmm. But I said, but you realize that this core mm-hmm. is not the child in front of you. She mm-hmm. said, I do. So what are the consequences of this for a lot of kids, do you think? Well, you know, if you haven't got a parent like you, who's going to yeah. question yeah, the way that it's administered, not necessarily, not change it or ask if it could change, yeah. but bring this up as an issue. What do you think... What do you think are the main consequences so for a child? Our children, especially children with autism, you know how like Stephen Shore says, there's not one person like another person on the spectrum. Yeah. Their skills and their thinking, it's very individualized. Mm-hmm. Like it's very different. Like my son has amazing memory. He has, uh, he memorizes a lot. He has a fascination with members, uh, with numbers, sorry, with numbers. He remembers dates. I mean, he has some things that you're like, oh my God, are you a genius? But then on the standardized test, <coughs> he's in t- severely intellectual disabled. And that's, and that's, the ticket, right? So that's, I'm showing the school he's, he has this low score. I can try to explain whatever I want. They're going to look at the score and say no. And the consequences of that is that our kids are placed in lower services that don't meet their needs, that don't harness their potential, that don't find a skill, that don't, and ultimately they don't give them meaningful lives. So they are being let down. They are being not utilized. You know, you're not allowing this child to contribute to society, right. to do something. Mm-hmm. That's also an extra cost for you yes. if you're going to put him in a home. Of course. So Absolutely. the whole system lets, it, <clears throat> lets us down. Yeah. But standardized testing, mm-hmm. I didn't realize until this day, because edu- educational psychological uh, assessments were always very useful for me to see which area there's we need to work on, which areas to cover, what, where has he improved. I always believed in those, but after getting this uh, last IQ test, I was very perplexed and very shocked that the person who administered themselves actually kind of believed that. Kind yep. of believe yep. that. Yes, this he has some adaptive way. skills, mm-hmm. but his IQ is that low. I'm like, first of all, our kids are not numbers. You know, mm-hmm. you say your IQ because, and then I looked at some of the pictures. I said, can you just explain the process? Because I was curious. And one of it had like a Libra, I don't know what you call a weight machine that I, I don't think we've seen one of those for 20 years. Mm. I don't think my son has ever seen. He was supposed to compare the weight right. or something. It was like, you're not even exposed to that. One of it was the wind blowing in two directions. I couldn't figure that out. Mm-hmm. And how is that a measure of intelligence? Mm-hmm. Those tests are so outdated yeah. and they so don't reflect what our kids need today. Mm-hmm. And honestly, they do nothing but let our kids down. Okay, so moving forward, um, how can we, I mean, this is, this is another revolution, it's basically. It needs to be, it yeah. needs to be another revolution. Uh, he, there needs to be more than a shift. Yeah, of course. But how, how do you think, how do you think it 
how do you think we can do that? You know, how do you think that this can change? Well, you know, everything, all the literature and psychology and education is always constantly being reevaluated mm-hmm. according to like the changes in population, the changes of the students. There are, there's definitely people carrying out research in the field, maybe not not as much as we would, as fast and as much as we would want to see. But I know that, for example, the DSM f- keeps changing. So for anyone who is not sure about what the DSM is and what it does. Yeah. The DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders. Right. So everything from ADHD to sensory processing disorder to autism, like autism used to be classified differently between the DSM four and five. There was a shift because of research. So the four and the five, that's the difference. So that's the latest. The latest is the five. Right. But that between the four and the five, especially within the autism, autism is classified very differently in, in, um, in the DSM five. For example, Asperger's, they got rid of that. Yeah. label they just call it autism level one Mm -hmm. or autism you know they've also split it up in different levels Mm -hmm. and uh, and those that's that's what it is the manuals the literature is constantly evolving Mm. according to research Mm. so i am hoping that somebody you know if enough people advocate you know and that's what it comes down to but we're seeing changes within you know this area and how they clinically can diagnose and identify the differences in abilities within a diagnosis Mm -hmm. but it seems that within educational um you know our our education system no matter where you live in the world has fundamentally been the same for over 100 years it has been you need an sat to go to college you need a you know but i mean some of them are useful i mean honestly i think for example for our children they're not useful for uh, for they let our kids down Mm -hmm. so i mean Usually, when you, when I'm, let's say when I applied to college, yes, I took my SATs, I took my TOEFLs, whatever. But also, the college looked at my essay. They looked at the 360 the views yeah. for a school to tell me bring me an IQ test, and then we talk yeah. because this might not be. So you've already dismissed. You've already decided. Oh, is this child? You know. So to me, you're not inclusive. To me, yeah. you're working with the high end of the spectrum, which is wonderful. And by the way, let's not dismiss kids on the high end mm-hmm. of the spectrum because they also are let down both sides. Right. And it's funny because we I was having a conversation about that with uh, one of the moms earlier it's like no matter what kids with special needs fall through the cracks right because no matter where you yeah, are on that spectrum you, are, you will always fall. and i yeah. mean she I'll, I'll be honest the psychologist was very sweet and she offered to, to write a report where she could tell more about but i said yeah but they're interested in the number and that's the thing this is this report it's this yeah. piece of paper yeah they're interested in the number not in what you have to say they mm-hmm. don't care they have mm-hmm. a certain standard mm-hmm. standardized certain standard mm-hmm. if the kid is not at least this IQ. He's mm-hmm. not. We're not the right match for him, and so on and so on. The problem with the test itself is that the way it's administered, even the way the questions are being asked, they're not. There's no accommodation. Yeah. It's not accommodated. It's not. It's not explained to them in the way they can understand mm-hmm. that picture. Mm-hmm. You're just asking a question that you know he probably cannot even you know understand exactly what you're asking. It's not oranges and for both. oranges or apples zero, for apples. Zero, zero, this zero. is the yeah, thing. So basically what not. you've got, it's and I, I think always, even with map testing and things like that, um, you know, anything like that, you there's not really any official no. accommodation. No, there isn't. So you are literally testing um, somebody with autism in the same way in the same way yeah. as a neurotypical, um, neurotypical person yeah in the same way and, and then this is the and then it's like oh sorry issue. the rules are very strict mm. we can't change them oh well, i mean i asked her flat out i said this number represents a person and she said no okay but mm-hmm. at the end of the day who gets penalized him yeah who gets penalized us who what type of education is he getting if he is intellectually disabled on paper but he can do so yeah. much yeah. he can contribute mm-hmm. so much but mm-hmm. like no that doesn't matter because mm-hmm. you know and also i think as well it's very interesting to see with all of our children that they're all good at so many things and they're also very bright yeah. and whether or not we need even more reform of the education system for kids like ours to say, right, okay, well, you know, when do we identify at this point that they're not going to have um, a, like a career in, um, a, like a regular path yeah. through education? Yeah. So if they don't have a regular path through education, mm. that's fine. Yeah. And that's great I'm because yeah. it's great. That's what but, they can do. But then let's identify when they start vocational programs. Yeah in order to be not a drain on uh, estate exactly. or services and have productive lives they need to get up in the morning they need to have jobs 100%. they need to live independently 100%. so when do we start that process so 
I mean, this is a conversation I'm, to be continued for sure. It is. No, absolutely <laughs> so we, it is. And, and that's what it is. A standardized test is not a measure of what your child can do. First of all, because your child cannot access the standardized, cannot access the test itself. It's yep. not modified no. to fit how your child learns yep. and how he processes right. information. Yeah. So that test is not valid in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had a breakdown. You remember, yeah. I called you crying. Mm-hmm. I had a breakdown because I was like, wow i mean i love this the psychologist i've worked with her for years but like you really believe that they taught you to believe that because i as a smart educated person or even uneducated person i can tell you that's not right that's not not, that's not accurate that's not a reflection of the son i raised i know what my son can do and i think for anybody who um feels that they're not able or confident enough to approach and have those discussions with a psychologist you know maybe you're in a system whereby you know you're not you're not able to have those conversations then parents will come away and they will be upset and disappointed and and the thing is that you have a plan for your child and you know them like you say and you know what they're capable of and it just feels very often that these opportunities are being taken away just like you know that's what it feels like Mm -hmm. all the opportunity opportunity to education Mm -hmm. the right to attend school there's no yeah we're being very limited and and you know it's 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 again it's we all we go through that it's common for all of us to it's something we all go through and and it's something that needs a revolution as you say it's not the revolution yeah um, thank you for joining us for this episode. Um, please do get in touch if you have any uh, comments or suggestions or you'd like any more further information about this topic. Uh-